Okay, right here is a 1996 Caterpillar 5130. The 5130 was the first of Caterpillar's 5000 series hydraulic mining excavators to be introduced. And the reason for that was to specifically target the 100 ton class of off-road mining trucks. It was during the September 1992 Mine Expo show in Las Vegas, Nevada, when Caterpillar first displayed the prototype 5130 in shovel configuration. Now let's go and get a closer look at this machine. When Caterpillar engineers were designing the 5130, their main goal was to design a machine that would be a perfect match for a 100 ton class truck. Now the original prototype version of the 5130 that was displayed at Mine Expo in 1992 was set up with an 11 cubic yard bull clam. However, Caterpillar offered bull clam sizes ranging from 11 to 13 and 3 quarter cubic yards for the 5130 in front shovel configuration. The backhoe or mass excavator configuration of the 5130, which is what you're looking at right here, was launched a year later in 1993. This machine was designed to swing a bucket ranging anywhere from 10 to 13 and a half cubic yards standard. An optional larger 17.8 cubic yard bucket was also offered for this machine for coal loading purposes. If you look on the back of the stick, you can see the two bucket cylinders to curl the bucket in and out. And on the top of the boom are the two stick cylinders to push the stick in and out. Here you can see where the two drive motors are located to propel each individual track. And take note that both the motors and the hydraulic lines that run to power the motors are encased inside of these metal shields. This is to protect the motors and the hydraulic lines from any rocks or falling debris when the machine is in operation. And here you can see where the two boom cylinders pin to the superstructure on the machine. The 5130 was available from Caterpillar with three different size track shoes, depending on what the customer preferred and also depending on the type of conditions that the machine would be working in. 32 inch crawler shoes were standard for this machine. Caterpillar also offered optional wider 39 inch crawler shoes for working on softer ground conditions. This 5130 is set up with the narrow 26 inch crawler shoes for working on hard rock. And to help give you an idea of the size of a 5130, this machine measures 21 feet 5 inches tall from the ground to the top of the operator's cab. And the overall width of this machine from end to end of the side rails up top is 21 feet 9 inches. Now, let's go up on top of the 5130. Okay, this first compartment that is located directly below the operator's cab, this is the electronic room. This big box that you see mounted on the wall right here is where all the computers, relays, and electronics are to work the machine. This compartment also acts as a storage compartment. Operators and mechanics will often store some tools and maybe parts in this compartment so in case the machine should break, they have quick access to some tools.
If you look right here on the side of the superstructure, you can see the plate with the machine's model number where it says 5130. Inside this compartment, you can see the grease barrel for the central lubrication system. And here you can see the oil cooler. Now this big tank that you see right here is the hydraulic oil reservoir and it holds 324 gallons of oil. On the right side of the machine is the powerhouse. And these compartments that you see right here are to get back and service the diesel engine and the hydraulic pumps on the machine. Now let's go inside and check it out. Here you can see the hydraulic pumps on the 5130. Through this door is the engine room. Let's go inside and check it out. And right here is the big Caterpillar diesel engine that powers this machine. It's a model 3508. This is a V8 turbocharged and after-cooled diesel engine. Now originally, this engine was set to produce 700 horsepower for this machine. However, after further field testings and evaluations performed by Caterpillar engineers, it was decided that the machine was just not getting its necessary power. So in 1994, Caterpillar increased the power rating for this engine to produce 755 horsepower for this machine, which is what this engine produces. This exact same engine can also be found in the Caterpillar 777C off-road mining truck and also in the Caterpillar D11N bulldozer. All three machines use the exact same engine. you can see the two swing motors on the 5130. And you can also get a view of the machine's hydraulic system. Okay, let's go up on top. Unfortunately, the operator's cab on this machine is locked, so I will not be able to take you inside and show you the control setup. But from looking through the window right here, you can get a pretty good view of what the inside of the cab on a 5130 looks like. The two joysticks on the right and left side control all the digging functions of the backhoe in the front, or if the machine were set up as a front shovel. In shovel configuration, a trigger switch on the joystick controls the clam functions. The two hand levers you see out in front of the operator's seat connect to the foot pedals on the floor, and that is how you travel the machine, just like a smaller Caterpillar excavator. The noise level inside the cab is rated to be below 65 decibels. The machine also has a vital information management system, known as the VIMS. If you look off to the right side, you will see two display screens. The upper screen displays the engine coolant temperature, hydraulic oil pressure, system air pressure, and the fuel level, while the lower screen displays operator requested information and also contains the Vital Information Management System three category alert system, which provides advisory information to the operator when the machine malfunctions. And looking off the catwalk here, you can get a good view of the backhoe or mass excavator configuration on the machine. Right here is the diesel fuel tank. It holds 687 gallons of fuel. Here you can see the cap to fill the tank with fuel. On the back of the machine, 
All of these red canisters that you see on the top of the machine's counterweight are for the fire suppressant system. Here you can see where the boom pins to the superstructure. You can see all the hydraulic lines that run out to power the backhoe in the front. Now on the top of the engine house, this ladder you see in the front is to get down in front of the engine radiator and also to get at the grease line, which you can see wound up right there, which is used to lubricate the bucket. You can see the caps to fill the radiator with antifreeze. And here you can see the two air intakes and air cleaners for the engine. And you can also see the two big mufflers. And from here you can get a good overview of the top deck of a 5130. The larger 5230 is basically set up the exact same way as its little brother, the 5130. Caterpillar designed the 5130 to break down into eight module sections for quick breakdown and reassembly of the machine. And sales-wise, Caterpillar built more 5130s as backhoe mass excavators than they did as front shovels. The mass excavator configuration of this machine turned out to be more popular in the mining market. The overall operating weight of this machine in backhoe mass excavator configuration, as you see right here, is 195 tons. If this machine were set up as a front shovel, it would weigh in at 193 tons. Later on in 1997, Caterpillar introduced an upgraded 5130B model, which featured a number of upgrades over the original 5130, such as beefed up swing bearings, new hydraulic valve layouts, the shovel bull clamp capacity increased to 14 and a half cubic yards and the mass excavator configuration breakout force increased by 10 percent with new upgrades made to the machine. The B model also received a more powerful upgraded 3508B EUI diesel engine capable of putting out 800 horsepower for the 5130B. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see the larger 5230 in a documentary video similar to this one, you can find it by searching my channel homepage. But there she is, a 1996 Caterpillar 5130.